بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم كلاما كاملا على سيدنا محمد تنحل به العقاد وتنفرج به الكرات الاخرى بالحمد وتنال به العائد الحسنات وتستصلح الغنائم وتستجد الكريم وآل الرحيم في كل لمحة ونفة جعل الكل معلوم لك وبعد I wasn't going to interrupt today, but I wanted to meet, I wanted to, I wanted to see you, and also it's better to move in small steps than to to break the, the, the pace, the momentum. In fact, alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, uh, today we're, um, even though it's a small uh, uh, overview of what we did last time, which is al-mustahzi'un uh, al the injuries of the those who... Uh, disrespected and dishonored and, and injured and uh, they, they, they played all these these, uh, these tricks on the Prophet so we had Abu Jahl Abu Jahl who, uh, who, who, was, who was known if you remember he, uh, he promised to, to kill the Prophet and he was, he was uh, uh, stopped by Sidna Jibreel Jibreel who was behind the Prophet and in front of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, he became petrified. And we also saw that, um, you know, the story of Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. So we have to, you know, rem remember these names, keep remembering them. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, who is uh, one of the main mustahzi'in. Uh, he, uh, <coughs> he also, um, he made sure to, to throw on the Prophet when the Prophet وسلم, was in the Kaaba and when he was in sujood, he took advantage of that position and he threw dirt, al farf, wal, you know, uh, manure, and also the dead uh, animal waste. Uh, and uh, the Prophet remained there until Fatima radiallahu anha. No one could, no, none of the Muslims could defend him. But Fatima radiallahu anha had come and the Prophet also. Uh, uh, made dua, he made dua against uh, uh, these people, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And it doesn't, uh, the Prophet is not, is uh, never pushed to that point, but he made dua against them, uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. <coughs> and uh, finally, Ibn Masud, what he tells us, what, what he tells us about uh, Abdullah bin Masud, uh, about Uqba bin Abu Mu'ayt, is that on the day of Badr, he was killed, sharafatlati. Uh, he was killed in a way which could not be described. And that by itself is an important uh, lecture if we could speak, spend on that. Spend time on, on how the mustahzi'un have passed away it would be very interesting. Because uh, the words of Allah are true and when Allah says, uh, So that's, uh, that's what happened with uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Aqba bin Mu'ayt. And uh, we had also uh, another situation with uh, Abu Lahab and his wife, and I think it's his wife, Allahu Alam. And she used to do very often, she used to come and throw garbage in the front of the, the door of the Prophet. And they were very close, they lived very close to one another. Uh, he was maybe one or two houses away, uh, Abu Lahab. So Umm Jami used to, used to curse the Prophet, she used to throw garbage at him, and this time she, he left the garbage at the door of Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, these people, although they, their hearts were evil, they were was filled with shirk, they had some good values, they uh, spoke the truth, they kept their words, and they also respected their guests and so on. So Rasulullah said, Ya Abdi, Ya Bani Abdi Manaf, Ayyu Jiwarin Hada, how could you be, you know, displaying these, these characteristics? What, what type of a character is this of a, of a neighbor? So uh, <coughs> we know that, uh, we know how uh, you know, his, his wife uh, also was, uh, was accused in, in these verses. We have also Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Again, remember these names, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. He's also very close neighbor to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, he invited the, the the nobles of Quraysh and Rasulullah accepted and when he came in again their their nobility did not uh, did not allow 
someone coming into your house and not eating from the food. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm not going to eat until you say ash-shahada. Shahadullah wa Muhammad wa sallam. It was a very popular uh, instance that happened. So he, he took the shahada. Sorry. <laughs> yes. I didn't get it. Uqba. Yes. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id. You know, everyone is in his house. And the, the, the scary part is that for him is that everyone witnessed it. Okay, Rasulullah said, I'm not going to eat until. And then he says, Yes, Ashhadu an la ilallah shalla Muhammad Rasulullah. So when everyone heard this, you know, they came to him, they came to him and they said, Yeah, Uqba, uh, you have left our religion. And especially uh, Ubay, uh, he tells him, What he means, what he ka haram. We I'm not going to see each other. It's haram that we, we meet again until you do these the following things. You spit in the Prophet's face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You hit him over the, the neck and you punch him in the eye or, or slap him in the eye, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he did this. How did he do it? We'll see in a second. But when this happened, uh, Allah revealed, وَيَوْمَ يَعُدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ On that day, on that day, the oppressor will bite on both of his hands. Now when we do this, no, it's both of his hands, both of his hands, everything. Uh, and he would say, Ya Laytani Tahasu Ma'at Rasuli Rasul, I wish I was on the side of the Prophet. Ya Waylata Laytani Lam Attahit Fulanan Khalil. I wish that I wasn't the, the bosom friend of that other person. Lakad Avalani Ali Dikri Idja Ani. You had strayed me from the path when you came to me. And the shaitan is a deceiver to begin with. So uh, this man, I mean, this. Not only in the Quran, but it's also in Bukhari that uh, when the Prophet وسلم, was praying, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Okay, so now he has to he has to free himself. He has to make things uh, even. So he comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he takes this uh, cloth and he holds him by the neck and he strangles Rasulullah. So now you imagine why Allah revealed this. Yawma ya'uddu al-zalimu. This is the, the terrible thing that he has uh, you know, accused of doing. So he tries to strangle the Prophet ﷺ until Abu Bakr comes and he says the verse which Allah had revealed earlier. أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجْلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيَّةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Are you killing a man who has come, who, uh, who said that uh, Allah is my Lord and he has come to you with clear signs from his word? And then we have Al-As ibn Wa'il. Al-As is the father of Amr ibn As. Okay, so Amr ibn As, his father, Al-As ibn Wa'il, also was extremely vehement and, uh, and, and uh, an enemy to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah reveals verses uh, on him. Uh, so one of the things that happened is, one of the things that, that uh, happened with him is that he had a, a debt with uh, Al-Khabbab ibn Al-Ars. Okay, and, uh, and so Al-Khabbab comes to Al-As, the father of Amr al-As, he tells him, where is my money? Where is my debt? And he tells him, doesn't your religion say that uh, on the day of judgment you will have this, uh, the gold and, and silver and the gardens and, and all of that? So we'll meet then, we'll meet then, and you'll get what you want, I'll pay you back then. So Khabbab the who said who's the person? Al-Khabbab al-Haq, Khabbab. Khabbab the Al-Arf. Khabbab al So he tells him, oh, on the day of judgment, doesn't your prophet say that on the day of judgment we will we'll have all these things? You'll get all of it and I'll pay you back. And then Allah revealed uh, a verse in Surah Maryam, أَفَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي كَفَرَ بِآيَتِنَا وَقَالَ إِنَّ مَا يَمْنَ وَلَدَكَ And uh, at the end of the verse, wa and he will inherit what he what we say, what he says. He will come alone. Okay. The other mustahzi uh, is Al Aswad ibn Abdu Yahud al Zahri or al Zuhri al Qurashi from Bani Zuhra. He's one of the uncles of the Prophet from his mother's side. And he used to make fun, you know, there's different ways of making fun of people. The bullying is different levels. You know, sometimes you don't have to hold the person by the neck and punch him or swear at them. Sometimes you're sitting with your with your gangs 
and making faces or gestures or winking. So he used to make these gestures and say certain things when the companions of the Prophet used to pass. And uh, he would say, for instance, The companions would come. They would say, ha, here the kings of the earth have come. And the, the companions, obviously, radiallahu anhum, especially Mecca, was very poor, were very weak physically. They, they were pale. They didn't have the money for food. Their clothes were, clothes were, were ripped. And so uh, uh, he would, and after saying that, he would tell the Prophet sallallahu Haven't you been talked to from uh, the, the heavens? Has Allah spoken to you? So, uh, his, so he's one of them again, and he had uh, also a terrible ending. And Al Aswad after that is uh, Al Aswad ibn Abdul Muttalib. Uh, Al Aswad ibn Abdul Muttalib Al Asadi. Uh, what did he do? Uh, he's the one that did the ghams, you know, the uh, the gestures. The other one, Al uh, Aswad ibn Abdul Yahuth, they're both Aswad. The first one is Al Aswad ibn Abdul Yahuth, and this one is Al Aswad ibn Abdul Muttalib. Uh, who is the, the, the cousin of uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. So he, with his clan, again, they, they all come with their gangs and they wink at each other and they say things. Here, here is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Allah reveals in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَضْحَكُونَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ And if they pass by them, they would wink to one another. وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ and at the end, Allah says, They accuse the, the Muslims of being uh, wrongly guided. And then uh, there is this person, again also, whom, whom we have to remember, Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, who is the uncle of Abu Jahl. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira is the uncle of Abu Jahl. And he also, obviously, you can imagine if Abu Jahl was a, a noble, noble a great nobleman, then Al-Walid, who is the uncle of Abu Jahl, was also one of the great noblemen, and... Uh, father of Khalid bin Walid? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, if he was, you would have mentioned here, but he's more noted by his uh, relation to Abu Jahl. And here is something to, 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 to make a note of, is the Arabs were very knowledgeable of their language. They were very, very powerful. They didn't write, but when they spoke, they spoke perfectly. They spoke with perfection and they made, uh, they recited poetry and so on. So, um, and, and this, and this uh, like very recently I've, I've heard, a, I've heard a, a presentation by someone <laughs> who was speaking, uh, it's a beautiful presentation by this sheikh. He says, someone came to him and told him, the Quran is filled with mistakes, 250 grammatical problems and 1,000 and so, uh, problems. and he, he gave such beautiful answers, extremely beautiful answers. But here we have the proof that the Quran is perfect. And when he, he spoke to his people, Al-Walid ibn Mughira, he told them, what did he say? He says, uh, he swears by Allah. This very same, famous words that Muslims have memorized and are reciting on the minbar because they are uh, a praise of the Quran and the words of the Prophet. So he says, By Allah, these are not the words of a human nor of a jinn, and they have a, a beautiful taste. And it's like a, you know, a, a sweet. It's it's a crowned with sweet, and, and its bottom is well founded, and so on. And it is the highest, and nothing goes above it. And the Quraysh now are shocked and hurt, and uh, they say, Allahi al walid This man, al walid bin Mughira, has left our religion, and now because of that, all of Quraysh will leave our religion. So they go to him and they say, you gotta, you gotta, what are you saying? So they send uh, Abu Jahl, his nephew, to speak to him, and they're all sitting together. And then he responds back. No, they're talking to him, and they say, come on. And he responds back, and he says, listen, guys, uh, 
he tells them uh, You guys, uh, uh, you say that he's a poet. Have you ever heard him say any poetry? They said no. You as you you have uh, pretended or said that he is a, a magician. Have you seen him play tricks or magical tricks? Everyone is saying Allahumma la. They, he told them وتزعمون أنه كذب and that he is a liar. فهل جربتم عليه شيء من الكذب؟ فقالوا بلا اللهم لا. Have you seen him ever lie? He said no, impossible. He, he never lied. He kept saying these things, and at the end, they said, so what? So what is he? What's the problem? And he told them, al Walid ibn Mughira, he had to say something to appease him and to go back into the Quran, and he said, هو إلا ساحر. ما هو إلا ساحر. He's just a magician or a trickster. Haven't you seen him break between families, a brother and his a man and his brother and so on. Haven't you seen him do these, these terrible things? And they finally breathed out. They said, finally, he's with us. So Allah in the Quran again revealed something which was uh, very difficult. And at the end of that verse, he says, Sa'uslihi saqa. He shall taste the hellfire. And many verses in, in uh, Surah Al-Muddathir was about Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. Uh, also, so so at the end, I know, inshallah, uh, this is what I promised myself, is just to speak on this. And we're speaking about the al-mustahzi'een. And I think uh, it would be a great uh, lesson to go and see what happened to each of them, especially on the day of Badr. Even Abu Lahab, I think, Abu Lahab did not go. He didn't go to the battle. He stayed in Mecca. Yeah. Yet he died, Abu Lahab. Why did he not go? I'm just he was curious. afraid. <laughs> he was... I don't want to say the English word, but he was Coward, if you could uh, worse than that. He was petrified. I, I don't want to say like the, the funny yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. But he was so afraid, he stayed back and he got sick and he died and they couldn't uh, bury him because it was uh, con contagious. They were afraid of his, his sickness. And so they, he stayed out there for three days until they pushed him into a hole and then they covered him with what? Rocks. <laughs> they threw they didn't even bury him. They, they buried him with rocks. So this is just one of them. And like I said, it would be a beautiful thing to go over how the mustahzi'een. And Allah promised him when he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna ka faynaka al mustahzi'een al mustahzi'oon. Inna ka faynaka al mustahzi'een al mustahzi'oon. Allahu ala. Okay, so uh, one of the stories of al mustahzi'een, and there is not just these people, these are the famous ones, the, the six, the famous six who, ba who passed away in the Battle of Badr. There was also uh, a man whose name was not mentioned, his stories in Al-Bukhari, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, so he becomes a Muslim, he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, spends time with him, imagine, being given the honor to sit with Rasulullah, memorizing Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and then he turns away. And then he says bad things about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as if, I'm the one who teaches him. I'm the one, I'm the writer, al katib So he goes and he passes away. Allah, that means Allah has caused him to pass. And he was with his people and they buried him. In the morning he was on the ground. The, the earth pushed him up. So they said, ah, these are the companions of the Prophet of Muhammad, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, who have unearthed him. And so they buried him even deeper. Impossible to unearth this person with this depth. If it's two meters, they must have dug for 50 meters. Wallahu alam. The next morning he was on the ground. He says, ah, this is not humanly possible. It's impossible. So they said, this is probably from the punishment of Allah. And like I said, there were a few of those. Alhamdulillah, there aren't that many. Uh, but those who, who dared to make fun of the Prophet those who dared to be sarcastic of him, they paid a very uh, bad price in this world before the hereafter. Allahu ala wa sallallahu wa sallama ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Anything to say? Ah, barakallah. Abu Jahl was killed by the two Ansari boys. Two boys killed him. Abu Jahl? It's just funny that such a big man is just killed by two boys. Two boys from us.